Now for our feature story of the day, the latest from Max Kaiser, the high priest of Bitcoin. He says, got some new intel. Abu Dhabi is now the top contender, referring to Mr. 100, who now has over 50,000 biddies on their balance sheet. So let's start right here with the infamous tweet he shared on April 10th. Just got some new intel. Abu Dhabi is now the top contender. This was in reference to this tweet where he posted a flag of Qatar because initially he believed that this nation who was secretly purchasing all of this Bitcoin known as Mr. 100 could have been Qatar over there in the Middle East, but he updated us. Uh, And again, at this time, they had over 59,000 Bitcoin. So by now, they have a lot more. And uh, so he updated us saying Abu Dhabi is now the top contender because they got some inside information. He also tweeted 220,000 in play. The mystery sovereign buyer, Abu Dhabi, most likely will soon be revealed. Uh, Do you think that will be revealed? And as that reveal comes, will we hit 220,000 per Bitcoin. Uh, Let me know your thoughts. And I want to read some headlines for you. Unraveling the mystery, Qatar's role in the 3.3 billion Bitcoin investment rumors. Did Qatar buy the biddies? Deciphering the $3 billion mystery. Huge, if true, 100,000 Bitcoin God candle. Qatar eyes multi-billion dollar Bitcoin investment. The rumor has it they're sitting on a $500 billion sovereign wealth fund, according to Max Kaiser. And another headline line more recent the legal status of cryptocurrencies in saudi arabia and qatar now i'm going to share with you a mix of some of this information so let's start with the first article here i'm going to read you some of the highlights now max kaiser he initially started leaking some thoughts that this god candle was in play so let's start with where it all began Uh, right here we're going to go to crypto x It should be opening up right here. Yeah. So he wrote this on December 3rd, uh, a few months ago. The God candle, a 100,000 uptick in Bitcoin is in play. It will shift the global access of wealth and power in one tick. And he continued, I have one word for you. $100,000 Bitcoin, God candle fans, Qatar. The rumors are getting very loud on this. Their sovereign wealth fund rumored to be looking to buy a half a trillion dollars where the BTZ, and it wasn't just talk, uh, Qatar, right? Their princes, emirates, whoever you refer to them as, their leaders did meet up with Najib uh, Bukele uh, late last year, and it kind of went under the radar, but here's an actual photo of the emir with Bukele shaking his hand, and you can see their jet right there, and he also updated us December 6th, Max. He said, to add clarity, my source said, Bitcoin makes our one half a trillion sovereign wealth fund effectively worthless. We should just convert all of it into Bitcoin. Now, how cra- just hypothetically speaking, how crazy would that be if a wealthy nation such as a Qatar actually converted a half a trillion dollars It's Bitcoin. Is it even possible? Is there even that much Bitcoin available? Probably not. But what if that was the ultimate goal or outcome or target, right? Because clearly there's only so much Bitcoin available on the exchanges. I think they say roughly 1.8 million, but maybe it's a long-term strategy and maybe Mr. 100 could be Qatar or Abu Dhabi. We currently don't know, but Hopefully, we find out here soon. So yeah, a Bitcoin Archive pointed out here, uh, this are some of the reasons he was bullish on this. And shout out to the Bitcoin Archive. Uh, the Emir of Qatar visited El Salvador in September. That's when it initially uh, began. Uh, that's why Max put it is happening. Number two, Qatar private jet in Madeira, which is ultimately in... Portugal during the Bitcoin conference, which was more recent, a couple of months ago. You can see the jet right there. So, and then you have someone stacking sats uh, like a madman. Uh, Next day, Bitcoin breaks 65,000, probably nothing. And that was right. That was right off the back of them meeting up, which makes it uh, that much more uh, interesting. Now, Let's get back to our stories here. The Emir of Qatar just landed in El Salvador. The agenda, Bitcoin legal tender, mining and Bitcoin bonds, infrastructure investments. What are your thoughts? I mean, clearly, if they're linking up, they're probably discussing something Bitcoin related, I would imagine. But that's why I want to know uh, your thoughts, family. Do let me know. Let's see if I can pull up any more of these uh, tweets 
Yeah, I have one word for you, the 100,000 Bitcoin God candle. Now, we define a God candle, you can say it's just a $10,000 uptick, but when Max references it, he's referring to a $100,000 uptick in which he defined. Now, we also can call the $100,000 candle a Omega candle, as per uh, Samson Mao, his definitions for these candles, just FYI. But now I actually want to read to you the legal status of cryptos in Saudi Arabia and Qatar, because I've never read this before, and I saw this was published yeah, less than two weeks ago, so this is pretty new. And I'm going to read you some of the highlights of this article. Saudi Arabia and Qatar share common concerns regarding crypto, including their inherent volatility, potential and misuse in illicit activity, and the lack of established consumer protections. However, their approaches to addressing these concerns are much different. Saudi Arabia continues to adopt a cautious stance, warning about potential risks of holding off on enacting a complete prohibition. In contrast, Qatar has taken a more stringent approach, banning all crypto-related activities in the Qatar financial center sector. Now let's dive a little deeper. The legality of Bitcoin and other cryptos in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, the regulatory framework surrounding crypto is marked by a blend of caution and forward thinking. The Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority is at the forefront of monitoring the crypto transactions, focusing on regulatory environment that aims to protect investors while fostering financial stability. Now, the SAMA works to achieve a balance between caution and innovation. Crypto has quasi-legal status in Saudi Arabia. Back in 2018, the government restricted banks from assisting with any crypto-related transactions. Authorities have repeatedly stated that people who trade crypto have no financial protections and could be risking their investments. And at present, there are no recognized legal consequences for anyone who chooses to interact with digital assets of any kind. However, Saudi Arabia's unclear legal position presents a challenge for potential crypto investors, discouraging them from engaging in crypto trading because they fear possible legal repercussions. Now, is crypto Sharia compliant? Sharia law is a body of Islamic principles guiding Muslims in moral, ethical, and legal matters and covering aspects of daily life, including finance. Now, Sharia emphasizes fairness, avoiding excessive risks, and having real-world assets to back transactions and plays a significant role in shaping Islamic finance and can influence views on new financial concepts such as crypto. So whether cryptos like Bitcoin align with Sharia principles is a complex matter for Islamic scholars. Some view the excessive price fluctuations of cryptos as problematic because it encourages speculation speculation similar to gambling, which is illegal under Sharia law. Now, I would personally say Bitcoin is not gambling, but I can definitely see the sentiment on coining cryptos in general as gambling because there's millions of cryptos, and that's precisely why people invest in them. They're gambling. Now, cryptos lack intrinsic value and reliance on market demand, creating uncertainty, which is also discouraged in Islamic finance. Now, due to the lacks regulation. There are worries about crypto's potential for legal activity. However, do note, its decentralized structure fits perfectly with the fundamental tenet of Islamic finance eliminating centralized authority. Additionally, the transparent nature of the blockchain tech could promote values of fairness and accountability central to Sharia. Now, nonetheless, for now, the status of cryptos as Sharia compliant investments in Saudi is uncertain. However, more recently, I mean, the top leader of all of this came out and he actually uh, pretty much said that Bitcoin is in accordance to their you know, laws and that they recommended it. And I know I covered this maybe a couple of months ago here on the podcast. I forget that guy's name, but the head of all this came out and basically said it's compliant. Now, Qatar, let's speak about them. On the other hand, their restrictive measures against crypto activities. Qatar stands out with its decidedly restrictive approach towards crypto. The country's stance stems from concerns about investor protection, potential financial instability, and the risk of using crypto for illicit activities. Now, the what is that? QFCRA stance on cryptos versus security tokens. A report issued by the Qatar Financial Regulatory Authority in 2020 marked a significant shift in the country's approach to crypto, declaring a ban on all crypto-related 
activities within the Qatar Financial Center. And this sweeping ban encompassed core aspects of the crypto market, explicitly prohibiting crypto to crypto trading, crypto to fiat exchanges, and any services facilitating the trading, custody, or issuance of digital assets. This ban severely restricts the possibility of widespread crypto acceptance and investments within Qatar's borders. Now, the key word I'm focused on when I'm reading this is crypto, as crypto is a collective of every single cryptocurrency in the market, a very generic term, whereas Bitcoin is specific, decentralized, and I think these countries are all slowly but surely embracing it right now, but they may be some crypto bans, kind of like think of it in El Salvador, where Bitcoin is legal tender. We have uh, the, the largest stablecoin, USDT, also legal tender, but all the other cryptos are ultimately banned. So maybe something similar, depending upon how they define some of this. But now let's break down Qatar's religious context and Sharia perspectives on crypto. When evaluating whether cryptos are permissible, the religious setting of Qatar adds another level of difficulty to the government ban. Several fundamental tenets of Sharia law cast doubt on the compatibility of cryptos. Many Sharia scholars contend that for a currency or asset to be deemed Hollow. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It should be backed by a tangible asset or real economic activity. So Bitcoin clearly would be an example of permissible. And many of these altcoins, I don't think would fit uh, whatsoever. Young Saudis eye a crypto future awaiting regulatory clarity. Crypto is the advent of a new and equitable monetary system. Governments across the world view it differently and take action accordingly. For example, El Salvador recognized Bitcoin as legal tender, being the first country to do so. Shut up, Bukele. Some governments treat crypto as a commodity or property, but don't recognize it as legal tender, while others have banned cryptos altogether. Now, with cryptos, regulators identify risks like financial and macro instability, fraudulent behavior, and criminal funding. So the objective of the cautious and restrictive approach of the Saudi Arabia and Qatar regulators is to ensure that risks are covered and prevent any negative implications for the economy. So there you go. Now, check this. Excuse me. Uh, young adults more inclined towards crypto trading in Saudi Arabia. It shows you, you can see the breakdown from the age ranges. So a country is like Dubai taking the lead and setting up a regulatory framework for crypto. Now, keyword, Dubai setting up regulatory framework for crypto. What I just mentioned earlier, Max Kaiser, his top contender, Abu Dhabi. Now, obviously, Abu Dhabi is in the UAE along with Dubai. So maybe there's something to that on setting this up right now. Now, the futures of crypto regulations in Saudi Arabia and Qatar, even though they ultimately impose strict regulations, Bitcoin is compliant. The way they define it all, and again, we had the head, I forget the guy's name, the head of all this that follows everything and sets up, uh, you know, all this stuff. Uh, yeah, if you know that guy's name, let me know, but I forget. But anyways, in a nutshell, let me know who you think Mr. 100 is. Do you think that is Abu Dhabi, Max's top contender? Do you think it could be Qatar? Could it be the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Or could we be completely left field on this? And could it be another nation, not even on our radar right now? Or could it be a individual such as a billionaire like Jeff Bezos? Nobody really knows, but speculation has it. It's an undisclosed nation. Even Edward Snowden, the whistleblower, uh, came out maybe a month or so ago, which we covered on the pod a few times, and said he believes a nation is secretly purchasing Bitcoin behind the scenes and will soon announce it. That's right in alignment with what the insights that you know Max Kaiser has as well. I think we're going to see mass adoption, obviously, out of the Middle East. We're starting to see it not only in the United States with the ETF inflow since January 11th, with them now collectively having 850,000 Bitcoin in like three months. But now you're getting the ETFs launch out of Hong Kong over there in Asia, big money in Asia. And uh, yeah, what about the Middle East? What if these nations adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender, whether it's directly or indirect exposure to the king crypto? How do you feel that would likely impact uh, the Bitcoin market? And what if they say, hey, yeah, uh, Mr. 100 is Abu Dhabi. We have plans of buying X amount of billions worth of Bitcoin we just started. That alone can drive the price action through the roof. And in my opinion, more than likely why there hasn't been any official announcement because they want to keep buying on the low. I think 
the people purchasing, and especially the whales, uh, the people purchasing up the biddies right now, they're loving the discount on Bitcoin. Just more reason to buy more. For example, if you were sitting on billions of dollars, hypothetically speaking, would you rather buy most of your Bitcoin at sub 70,000 or would you rather spend more than 100,000 per coin? You know what I mean? Big difference there. So let me know your thoughts. And who do you think Mr. 100 is? Drop a comment right down below.